in September 2020, we sold our house in the UK, then moved to Normandy in France, where we bought an ancient French farmhouse with various outbuildings, including an old barn, a small cottage with two woodlands, and three and a half acres of pastured land in a beautiful national park area. Follow us on our journey as Budo and I renovate the farmhouse, manage our land and take on many projects for you to enjoy. Let the fun begin. Bonjour everyone. Welcome. Welcome, Welcome to um, Cozy Corner. Yes. Um, we're back in our corners We're again. back in the corner. <laughs> um, so we've had a, a funny old couple of weeks. Uh, we've not had some videos. No. Uh, reasons are... We've been filming, but not... Yeah, we've not been able to make videos. Uh, the first week we had... Um, I had to go to the hospital and have a routine uh, little thing. Yeah. And then um, the second week... or No, not quite. It was, it was like halfway in the week, yeah. wasn't it? We lost our uh, charger. Uh, for our well, laptop. It had a little kink in it and we knew and it was on its way wire. So all our information, by the way, is put straight from DJI or the iPhone straight onto the laptop. So we have it in position ready to make videos. And that's why we was come at stumbling block. So maybe going forwards in the future, we might think of another way yeah. of Because there's this. certain things I, I can do on the mobile, but like even when I take photos and film in front of the Etsy shop, it's all on the laptop. Yeah. So we need to change that a bit, don't we? So that will change case. in the future, so we won't get stuck like that again. So um, we've got the new charger. But we've been very busy, and we've got loads of footage. Uh, we'll briefly go over everything. So yeah. in this video today, Which you'll see... Today, a uh, Friday's video coming for you uh, is you'll see us. Uh, Tracy's moved all the logs, sorted and organised them out for the wood for next year's uh, wood season for Bernie. Not that we're worried about it now, but no. it's best to get in front. <laughs> and we have got enough for a whole season of for the uh, two wood burners, heating. Yeah. Uh, and and I start the porch. I build the walls up uh, with blocks. And on the walls, they'll be rendered eventually with a lime mortar, and then we'll lime wash them with a pigment uh, to match. I show you a little photo, uh, not photo, it's a little a doodle drawing that I did for to give them an idea to give you an idea of what that porch, what our, my vision is for that porch, and how it's going to be finished. Um, and the other stuff we've been doing was the. Lavender. Lavenders, yeah, we we planted, we went and collected the lavenders from yep. the nursery. Then you planted all the lavenders, didn't you? And then I went behind you putting all what we call the lavender shorts, which shorts. gets tucked under the membrane, which you'll see in the video, and actually just gives the lavender a bit of chance so that all the weeds don't actually come straight yeah. through, which we're going to get a problem with that anyway. And they come out lovely, so we've got all three rows of lavenders in. Yeah. We're, we've, we've planted so far uh, two rows of Grosso and one row of Phenomenal. Yeah. And then we've got Hickcock coming. We don't know when, no, but they, we'll they're getting a sort of another row out, uh, another for Hickcock. And then all them plants will be our nursery plants, which we'll be able to take cuttings and expand the field mm -hmm. over the next year or two to completely fill that field. Yeah. And that will look beautiful for the local community as they go past. They will have the love in the fields in the summer. It'll be fantastic for the environment, uh, the insects, the bees, yeah. and all the things that we want to encourage to our uh, homestead. Yeah. Um, and also, we've been up on the potage. Yeah, on the potage. You've been doing the rest of the posts and started putting on the pickets. fencing. The pickets, as pickets. they say in Francais. Um, pickets and started putting on the fencing. I've been tidying up all the borders. Also, in an up-and-coming video, um, Budo's um marked out two more growing beds so i do all the cardboard put all the soil out the soil yeah. down and obviously do some more planting, planting as well our, we've got our seeds in now and that's what we've been doing all uh for the last five six weeks there's been a lot yeah. of videos about uh, homesteading Plants. and growing food and uh, prepping up our garden because we've had to do that we've had to stop virtually all the renovation <coughs> work and we've had to do that yeah because we want to be ahead. Next year will be different because we won't have to build all this up. We just go and plant the seeds and then we move forwards. It's nice and simple. This year is very difficult. We have to do that. Um, well, with all the seedlings that we planted, which you saw in, I think it was the last video. 
that we made and what i wanted to say as well when you go on our channel to any new subscribers you're able to see all the renovation videos and the garden videos on the main videos but on a separate playlist i'm going to be putting all the um garden videos just on their own page. Garden, yeah. yeah because there's some people that might want to just watch the gardening so they don't have yeah. to sort through everything's been numbered i've numbered all the videos so if you're starting from the beginning your new subscribers then you'll just be follow able the to numbers follow and you'll the numbers. be fine so but i'll also be doing um i've got to plant um on all the seedlings because we've literally had a hundred percent germination yeah. so i'll be transplanting them on into four inch pots and then hopefully in about four to six weeks i'll be able to put them in to new bed to own our flowers. So beds. we've been busy, busy, busy. And the Etsy shop, I've been yeah. busy doing uh, that. We'll come on to that in a second. Um, so we've been busy, busy, busy. We've been, we've been finishing off on our garden, getting it prepped up, so there'll be less gardening coming in. But watch this Wednesdays, because you'll see us doing the lavender. Yeah. And you'll see it going down, and uh, you'll, you'll, you'll get an idea of our vision moving forwards on yeah. that as well. Um, and Tracy's Etsy shop, uh, Tracy's been very busy in the evenings with uh, crocheting and that, making stuff for the Etsy shop. So pop along, have a look at it, see what you think. The link will be and, in the description. Yeah, in the, in the description, yeah. yeah. And have a look and, and then, you know, whatever you decide, if you want to buy something from there, it all contributes to this homestead. Yeah. And that's what we're doing here. So, you know, have a look, see if you like it. And with every order, um, you get a free gift. I've just sent a lovely jute bag with some coloured cotton and a lovely flower that I crocheted to a lady who lives in France. Yeah. There's going to be lots more items being added in the next couple of days as well. So, And what's been nice it. about it is, is <coughs> the inquiries you've had, have quite a few have been from yeah. France, which, yeah. is, which is nice because we're living in France. So French... Uh, women are tending to like it yeah. and which is fantastic and they've also been quite local so some things i've actually had to send um, take off the shop that's why things have been taken off because you can't post it because it's people that yeah. have been local, local recommendations. Buying, so it's all but good. it's all, all good good, good. All um, positive. so we're now positive moving forward. We've got our laptop fixed uh, the sun uh, shining the sun is shining uh, spring is in the air and it's all going to get better we're going to have lots and lots of um renovation stuff coming forwards now because like i said we've got the uh, the porch i've started i'm waiting for the oak or chestnut to turn up um diddy the farmer has got some big logs uh sort of this this wide if you like by whatever length and uh they're in chestnut and oak so if, if he's got enough oak i'll do it in oak if he's got enough chestnut i'll do it in chestnut to build the porch uh, me and Tracy are going to be very busy as well over the next few weeks coming forwards. Probably longer. Uh, pulling out and clearing out where the old building was that's collapsed into the ground and grown over with brambles. We'll be uh, pulling that all out, seeing what we've got. I've checked one of the footings there for the old building. That's why it's fallen down, basically. Um, so I'm going to dig that out and put a proper footing in, and then I can start the build of the workshop. And the workshop will be two stories. Yeah. Uh, it'll be a lovely project and you'll see me going forward as well as the porch which will be a lovely project because you're going to see me cut the wood from the raw um, post and beam work so it's all morts mm -hmm. and tenants draw pegged and so on and so forth and then there'll be joinery in between that which will be making all the sashes the doors and everything and then we're dropping inside continuing stuff on the front room as well we have to do a bit of everything yeah. don't we and now the nice weather is here now yeah. i don't think it's going to change now yeah. i'm going to start uh, so, repairing the back walls for the pointy yes tracy's going to the back wall we're going to get that sorted out now the weather's here set up a scaffold system so mm -hmm. tracy can use it as a, a nurse a nursery job if you like where she can just pop off if she's not doing with helping me she can go off and then get on with a pointing and uh, we can do some filming on that yeah and I think that's about it, really, is it? It's, yes, it is. We're, uh, we're, we've got lots Shall of... Shall we just... I know the rugby's gone and been, but I just thought I'd tell you, we went to our oh. French neighbours, Lionel and Valerie. Um, yeah, Lionel yeah, had yeah. his <laughs> French flag. We bought our St George's flags on a big pole. It was fantastic. Beautiful but evening. We did lose gracefully. Yeah. But the good news for me... Is the island one, and my mum's Irish, so yeah. I always had to say. Well, my grandmother's Irish, yeah. so that's a that, that's my a double bonus. 
Well done, Ireland. Yeah, well done, Ireland. I just felt uh, it was good, the word it. We anyway, we, we have a great time. It's, it's just about friendship and, and good time. We've had some lovely, lovely times here with uh, people and local people and French people. We're just knitting into the community. It's beautiful. I love and it. I went there, didn't I? And I made them, of course, yeah. when you're in France because they were asking for me to make the chicken birani and they absolutely loved it, yeah. didn't they? I cooked it over there and I also made the Queen's cake, a yeah. Victoria sponge. sponge. It was lovely with whipped cream, whipped stra double cream. <laughs> strawberry jam and then I put fresh strawberries on top. Anyway, guys, it that's, uh, that's it for now. I hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, don't forget to tune in on Wednesday as well, because we'll have a Wednesday one this week, uh, so you can watch the Lavenders dying, and uh, you know, enjoy the video, and tell and us, if, send if, your comments, and tell us what you think. And if you'd like to be part of our journey, or support our journey, check out our Patreon page as well. Yeah, definitely, check out that, because uh, you get a little bit more information, background stuff, yeah. uh, it's coming up now, we've got, a, we've got, a, uh, sorry we should be going, but we've got a bit of a, more of a plan of how we're going to go forward, giving a bit more to our patrons yeah. um, and also uh, the way we're going to set up our intro and that, it's all coming. Yeah. Uh, we, we've got some plans changed to yes. change that it's, we're just keeping slowly, up with YouTube slowly, as YouTube is, you know. Slowly, slowly catch a monkey. As they say. That's an English saying. Anyway, guys. Bon weekend, everyone. See you all on the next one. So, hello, Chessy. What are we up to today then? Uh, Dad, well, we're going to build this porch, yeah? Okay. So, shall I explain to him what we're doing? Yeah, you better, because I can't speak English properly. <laughs> uh, anyway, sorry. Just going for a moment there. Right, today, so let me just pack up here. Tracy's just bringing a cup of tea, so uh, I'll just explain this to you. Oh, thank you. Bonjour. Thank you. Right. I'm going to get my gloves. Tracy's going to get her gloves. Right, so, you see me make that the other day, my little spot board. So I've now got it up ready to do this job uh, first day we've had a break of rain there's been rain like every day for about a week now um, so I'm going to build a block work up on this porch um, and today what I want to show you is, is we're going back to the hotline bedding mix again uh, the hotline mix is an old traditional old old mix uh, and it's probably one of the best uh, mixes there is. I mean, I, I feel that the building industry really should come back into it and use it more often now because it's flexible, it's uh, moisture breathable, um, it sticks to like to a blanket if you know the word, um, and it's fantastic stuff. And the good thing is the bonding on it is absolutely unbelievably excellent. It will bond for many years stick now this is a modern uh, concrete block i'm using and uh the some the, the lime is an old traditional method but you always want the point in or the or the bedding mix to be weaker than the actual block work or the brickwork especially in brickwork when it's going to be fancy nice showing brickwork okay so today without waffling too much <laughs> we're going to do a hot lime mix so i've shown you this before so basically I have sand in this bucket, uh, this wheelbarrow, and I have sand in this bucket, okay? And the ratio of that sand, all that sand together, is nine of these jugs, okay? Uh, they're two litre jugs, I think. Anyway, don't matter about that, just as long as your, your ratio, your gauge, whatever you gauge with, is the same. So I've got nine of them, and then in here, I've got nine, uh, sorry, I've got three, uh, lime which is quick lime okay so quick lime is the most dangerous lime you can get uh, because this soon as water touches this it starts to heat up it can get up to well over 100 degrees so we have to be careful so i'm going to show you the process um but when that water is added to that that consumes the water really quickly and it and its volume do doubles or even nearly trebles in size okay so when this mix is finished it won't actually be if you saw the gauge i made which was a nine and three which is a three and one when this gauge is finished this i mean when this mix is finished the gauge will be altogether around about a one and a half to one okay and that's the mix we want the more fatty line we want in it the more uh the more it sticks and the more better it is to work with and it, it's just beautiful it's just beautiful anyway so we're going to drink a cup of tea let me just show you 
gonna drink a nice cup of tea now and then just turn you around and then we'll get Tracy to take over and she will uh, film me making up this uh, lime mix for you to watch uh, okay Hi there folks, we're here with Budo today and he's going to show us how to do the quick lime mix. Okay, come over here. So, we've got our quick lime in here, okay? And what we're going to do to this quick lime is we're going to slake it. And slaking means you put it with water, basically. Uh, so I'm going to, this is the ratio I spoke to you about a minute ago. So I'll put this all in the sand. Bear in mind, this sand is already wet, so the reaction is actually starting already. Okay, get away dog. I'm going to say one thing to you all guys now, look at me. <laughs> I have no mask and I have no glasses and this is totally the wrong thing to do. But we cannot find them for love the money. We've been looking at them this morning, we can't find them. They're here somewhere but we've got so much stuff in the house and we've moved a load of stuff about. But I will find them, but I'm going to take precaution and make sure that I don't breathe over this and not make it, you know, jump up. I'm going to stand back away from it, all right? So, the lime is in, okay? What we do is we keep the lime in the centre, okay? And we're going to add some water. And this is when the reaction will start. It, it's not instantaneously, but it will start. You'll start to see steam coming off it. I can see it already. Well, I don't want to drown it, so... Build the sides up. Kitty, here. There we go. Whoa. Reaction. Okay, put a bit more water on there. I'll dump this sand on there as well. It's like a little volcano. And what I'm going to do I'm going to leave that in there for a little while, look we've got a leaf, that's leaf all that is Anyway, what we're going to do is going to leave that in there, okay So what's going to happen is, it's heating up now And believe me that will start to crack actually, if you watch it Trace Hang on, I don't want to come too close You can start to see the cracks opening up Yep, I can, and I can see the Steam coming out, yeah, so as I close it out. over, it should carry on Trying to break through, it's like a volcano and What's happening is, is, it's consuming the water And it's expanding in itself And to do that is a thermal reaction So it's getting hot inside there And it's pushing and pushing and pushing Until it wants to push out See the cracks opening up again All round And this is why with lime, this type of lime, a lot of people don't use it no more because if you've never used it before, you have no experience with it, it, it can be a bit dangerous. You get it in your eye or you get it in your mouth or anything, it will consume all the water in your eye and it's very dangerous and, and in your mouth, you know, or in your chest, your lungs. So you have to be very careful. You have to be conscious of what you're doing and, and let it do its reaction. I'm gonna keep covering it up because I wanna keep that heat in there. And that's the key, get that heat in there. So that lime slakes properly. And what will happen is, the lime will dry itself out inside there. It won't actually get wet straight away. I have to start to add water to it. So if I, I ain't doing it at this stage because I don't want to drown it out. I want that reaction to happen fully. Now you might ask yourselves, well, why don't you just go and buy a bag of normal done stuff, you know? This here, and there's plenty of people out there that are now moving towards this method again from the old methods. This method here is the best binder for putting hard surfaces together, like brick to brick. Yeah. Um, they say in the trade that you put a brick and then you put a, your a cement on to keep a brick a, apart from another brick. You don't. You're sticking a brick to brick to brick or stone to stone, rock to rock, whatever this is the best stuff for it there is no better stuff because not only is it good for that it also it allows moisture to flow in and out of the property properly therefore you get no mold builds up build ups you get 
it solves all them problems the damp issues even if you've got a little bit of rising damp it's got somewhere to escape all the time you know it isn't just sitting there getting wetter and wetter they, they actually say this mixture and there's a fellow I'm trying to think about now who, who talks about this a lot he's an English fella uh, this mixture actually dries the properties out uh, I'll find out his name if I remember but anyway let's open it up again uh, just have a look how big the cracks are getting now let's try this side if you come around here yeah I can see that wow yeah so and I, for those who regularly watch I know I've, I've done this before for you to show you but I want to show you again in case you missed it whoever <laughs> and today I'm going to be starting building the porch so I'll give you some footage of me laying the blocks getting them up I'll just tell you what we're doing basically we've got uh, I'll show you there So this is the first block we've got on there. Let's uh, build out my corners. Okay, so when I worked this porch out in the beginning, the, the overall distance I made, right, was to accommodate a full-size block, a full-size block, a five-inch post, and a five-inch post. Hope you can hear that. So it's a five inch post and a five inch post coming up. And that will allow for a 33 inch door inside, which is about building regulations really. So we can get a wheelchair in the future. Someone might want a wheelchair in there or something. Um, and there'll be steps here obviously, but that will allow for that. Do you understand? Yeah. Um, and that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna build the corners up. And then I'm gonna go up three of these blocks. Okay, so I'll be going up to where my finger is. And that'll go round there, both sides. And then we'll have a nice uh, seal. And then all oak frame, pitched roof, slate. Fancy, fancy, you'll love it. I'm sure you will. When you, when you watch me build it. We've already got a slate, haven't we, yeah, over there sure. as well? Sharp. So we've got traditional slate here. Um, we were very lucky because when we bought this property, these were hidden away in that building down the bottom, weren't yep. they? And there's a load more of them over there, but there's enough here to do this roof. We just need to clean up, but they're traditional slate. Yep. Perfect and, uh, for the job. They're going to make it look beautiful. Anyway, guys, come back in a while when I start laying the blocks. I'll get the first corner in. Okay, welcome, folks. Right, we're back now. If you pan down here, Trace. So that dry mix, when it was covered, I've mixed it up. I've added more water. Now, my ratio, and this all depends on your sand, yeah, is if your sand's too wet or you've got a bigger coarse of sand or whatever, I'll just tell you what I've got here. It's a fine, sharp sand I'm using for bedding sand. Uh, normally in the conventional world, they use uh, builder sand, soft sand and cement. But in this way, uh, if you're using like a, a sharp sand, it means sharp. If you looked at a piece of sand under a microscope, it would be all jaggedy like this. And that's sharp sand. And round sand or soft sand is rounder. That's because it's been rolled by the sea or the, the water, the rivers or whatever, right? So the more jaggedy edges, the more connection you get between each bit of particle of sand. And then the bonding agent, which is the hot line, gets in between that and grabs it all and pulls it all together. But just going back down here, um, so this is still hot, but this is at the safe stage now, it's safe. Um, I could maybe, I can just put my hand on it. Okay, so that's still quite hot, but it's not gonna come up and get in my lung or anything. And uh, you can see the consistency I've got now. And I'll do what you call a slap test. So you can hear that, flap, flap, flap. That means it's sticking. And the other thing would be, if you put it on your trowel, there's quite a big lump on there. It's sticky, yeah? So uh, if I put a normal piece like that, say that was what I was gonna use for laying the bricks, I'd go like that. And that would stay on the trowel. And that's quite a lump on there as well, as you can see. If that was conventional sand or cement, that would just come off. That's so, what I do when I do the pointing. I turn the trail up, bang it on the side of the bucket, turn it upside down, and if it doesn't come off, then I know it's ready. Yeah, and that's a different type of line, yeah. you see. That's an NHL free line, which you use for general pointing. It's a general purpose thing. Uh, 
if you're going into historic buildings you wouldn't use that only under the ground or on chimneys things like that uh, around a lot of water really uh, the ideal stuff to point with is this but I haven't shown that because it's, it's a little bit dangerous for anyone just to have a go I mean I've seen one or two youtubers and they put this on their hands and push it in the wall and if you was using this product it's a no-no you know you just you've got to know what you're doing yeah uh, you don't push it in and brush it off it's all rubbish you point it in properly this is the this is the original stuff the, the NHL free is fine but it's it's a it's a get out of jail card if you like for most buildings yeah and yeah. you still have to be careful when you're doing um, line pointing as well because we know of someone who actually done it the French way didn't they put pushing the actual oh yeah with their bare hands yeah and all their skin has gone all now all on their fingers so you've got to be nails. sensible uh, there's a few things yeah right. but that's you know that's your choices you make whoever wants to do that does that uh, if, if they want to learn properly they learn properly they go and learn properly as a learn as a trade and be safe like, you know but anyway but we I've learned this over the years uh, working doing work in uh, conservation buildings and so on and so forth but this is I just want to show you this mix and how it goes it's a lovely mix it's the best mix you can get for your building and I do believe in 20 or 30 years the building trade will switch back to this at some stage it is definitely changing isn't it it's I've just, noticed that it's definitely changing but this stuff is just a bit of a faff to make but once it's done you've got the best you know it's got you've got your belt and braces all the way through anyway I'm going to uh, let that settle again I'm, I just want to say to you first when you see it in the mound when I put it in the mound I left it for roughly half an hour and then started to stir it up as it was cooling down I could see it stopped cracking and moving so much but the heat is still in there so technically this quick lime is slaking still and it will slake for a good few hours probably four or five hours uh, so you know you've got to take that into mind uh, when you're using it so it's about practicing using the material practicing and there will be need i will need to put some a little bit more water to this so my ratio did i say i can't remember now but no it was uh you might have said thing. it earlier so i just use this as a gauge okay this is a two liter tub as a gauge i use nine of sand uh nine of uh, sorry nine of sand and three of lime which makes a two a one and a half to one mix mm. because the lime expands by its double its volume yeah okay so you're really if it was a dry mix and it weren't expanding it would be a three and one mix but because the lime is expanding in its size it's consuming the water carbon dioxide everything it's taking in it then expands its size and that's why we call it a one and a half to one mix which is a great bedding mix for uh, bl blocks laying bricks whatever and then i put four of these so that'd be eight liters of water to this stage but it will probably take another one of these so i'd look on about five but depending on how wet your sand is in the beginning and then you're ready to lay and now that product there i could cover that over with a sheet stop the air getting to it and i could come back a month later and i could break it up put a bit of water in it and i could use it again you can see it's actually drying out now a little bit and that's drying out because it's consuming the water mm -hmm. all right there's lime it's actually so, a fabulous way isn't it's it it's a fabulous really? product and uh Takes it's time, an interesting yeah. product it's an it's an old way you know it comes right back from the middle ages uh where they were perfecting this sort of thing uh well, i suppose the bosses of it were at the time where the romans and the greeks were using this this product but we don't all know exactly how they did it but it was similar to this system but but the uh, but the uh, Tracy just sorry about that. The battery went on the uh, DJI. Tracy was warning me there when we was talking. But anyway, coming back today, I think we was on the part where I could cover this with um, a sheet of plastic, say, um, and come back to it in a month's time, stir it up, and we can we're away again, and it's working. It's a fantastic product. Uh, it's an old method, and I think it's going to come back into fashion, like I said. Um, and now I've got it up to this stage. Uh, you can come and have a look me stirring it in, Trey. So I'll keep moving it. Uh, the old way of doing this, they would have had a big stick and they would have pummeled it like this. Kept going like that to bring that moisture out of the, uh, um, the line, back out and make the reaction come through to the sand. 
and it, they would have done this for ages. There would have been a poor fella standing there all day doing this with a big old stick. But anyway, we don't need to do that uh, because one thing, we're not building up very high and you are limited on how high you can go with this in a day. Um, and uh, the Newton pressure, uh, you'll have to look that up on Google, I can explain it. But the Newton pressure of this is lower than cement, but you want that more forgiving on certain buildings. So certain big like skyscrapers that you couldn't use this stuff, I, I wouldn't think. I don't know if it's been experimented with, I don't know. But as it is now, this is what it is. Hi right, folks, right back, getting on at a pace now. So uh, let me turn you around and show you what, we're, what I'm up to. So there's another mix up now. That's the second mix. Uh, barrel load does one side. So I've got this side up, if you can see. Yeah, so we're at four, four courses up. Um, hello, Rox. Rox, come to see us. Hey there, buddy. Anyway, so uh, that's the height of it on the outside. Um, ignore the shucks that's coming off. There's new shucks going to make now. But um, the block work is going to be uh, lime rendered on the outside and then lime washed. Um, and then it'll be all oak above this now and oak, you know, everything's oak on there uh, but I've got this up so I'm going to lay this one in now as soon as this mix is ready because so it's been nearly half an hour now and uh, you can see I've got the DPC down this is a special DPC, this one it's a different type uh, uh, it's a rubberized type C uh, DPC and uh so if I get that one on the corner done and I'll row, lay this row in, then I can go and have some dinner, lunch. It'll be about 12 o'clock then. But uh, it's coming on nice. Don't take long once you know what you're doing. And then uh, obviously a trick with these is, I mean, I'm not teaching uh, bricklayers because they know their stuff, right? But the trick is the corners, okay? So you want nice, dead level corners. Okay, that's both ways that is as well. All right, if you keep your corners in, run nice and uh, plumb, not level as such, plumb. And then your levels are crossed. Okay, so your bubbles up in the middle again. So there you go. Proof is in the pudding, as they say. And then what you do is, I always bring my sides up, so if you look down there you can see there's no gaps between the block work, and that's all the way through. Um, anyway, it's getting exciting now because we're uh, starting to put things together, since we've got our bloody permissions to get to do all this. Uh, the thing is in France, they're quite, they're quite easy going as long as you don't take the mickey out of them. Um, obviously try and push it and you know build without saying uh, things like putting in windows uh, porches and that you just got to do all your declarations if you don't do it and you do it without saying it to them then uh, it can go wrong for you so but uh, anyway so I've got my DPC down and what I'm going to do now is just before I give that another give that another Ten, five minutes, ten minutes maybe. Just gonna pop over here and see what Tracy's up to. Because she's having a the clear out job. I'm doing the nice job and she's doing the clear out job. Hello. Won't be able to hear you, so I've got to come closer. Oh, that's looking better already, isn't it? I've just moved all the slate over here. So you just what? Moved all the slate. Oh yeah, there. cool, yeah. So all of these behind you. Yep. So you've got all this behind us as well, and then there's a load in the front, isn't there? Yeah, on the trailer. On the trailer. This is all going to be piled up here nicely. I'm just going to break this up so it's a bit flatter. But I'm waiting for you. I'm not sure what you're doing. You need to... Pull your finger out. Pull your finger out. Well, I'm, all I'm going to do is lay them blocks in, go up on the uh, field after, mm. do put the mesh fencing on, um, and then when I come back out from there, I was going to start the footings for the uh, workshop and pull all that rubbish out right. and then by about three o'clock I don't know what I'm going to do after then <laughs> no seriously no no I'm just going to do the port I'll be doing the porch and then uh, messing about after that no I'm actually waiting for you because I need 
you're going to um, mark out two more growing beds for me. Oh yeah, I'll do that for you later. And yeah. then I could, because all the cardboard's got a lovely soaking now from all the rain we've had. So I'm going to do that, get all the soil out, and then I can do some more planting. So, I as you just get this done. Yeah, you're doing a good job. Let's show. Let's right. show the The uh, tiles. These are what we got when we moved here, weren't they? They were left. Yeah. Um, they were left in that little hut, and they are uh, perfect. I mean, there's some old ones there as well because you can see they come off the old roof. <laughs> but the ones with the straps on are all new ones, aren't they? Yeah, I've left them on top just in case you need any spare ones. Yeah. But um, there, there are quite a few hornets ah. flying around. Oh yeah, the hornets. I know. We've got to be careful. See this here. Okay, this is an old motorbike tank, little motorbike, and uh, there's parts in here, little bottles. I found all these in the in there. There was an old bicycle and an old bit of a motorbike, and this was the building that was hit by a Sherman tank in the Second World War and was never redone. It, everything fell on top of it. So whatever's under there there now is Second World War. This is where they may have had the horses as well, because this is a hard stand in here. Isn't yeah, yeah. This is, yeah, this is where we had the caravan in the first place. Yeah. But uh, it's a nice nice hard stand in here, but we'll use utilise that in the future. But anyway, let me just get back up here without tripping up. So uh. next time you come, we'll probably do a bit of speed ramping. I'll have all this clear. Yeah. Because we we just dumped everything, didn't we? Because we've just got so many... Yeah, yeah, well, it's been winter in it, and we just have been putting stuff down as we see it. But Tracy's got all this as well here. So she's got to take all that over there as well. So there's quite a lot for you to do. You'll be busy for the next 20, 30 minutes anyway. <laughs> I mean, three or four hours. <laughs> it's lovely if you could work as quick as you do, as speed ramp like that. Yeah, I don't think they'll hear that. Tracy said, would it be good if you could work as like a speed ramp and get things done like when you're speed ramping? But uh, so Tracy will do a bit of that after for you. And then let's pass our seeds. Look, we've got some more seeds up here. But they're for the gardening one. There we go, let's get back to that. Look, I don't know if you can see, I'll show you this quickly and then we'll uh, cut it off there. But, gotta go low. Gotta get low. Can you see the steam coming off of that? That's still red hot. Oh, that is really hot. I can't put my hand on that. And that's a uh, quick lime slaking. And that's what I'm doing on there, obviously. It's very, very sticky mix, but it's solid, it's beautiful. Trace is coming at the end of that now. Well done, Trace. Oh. It's warming up, lovely, isn't it? I love it. I love yeah. it outside. It's lovely working outside. Wow, it's well done. You've done a great, great job there. So she's moved all them herself. What's that taking you? About an hour, isn't it? Yeah. Just over? Than that, I don't think. Oh, it's about an hour, I'd say, just over maybe. But, but if you notice, let me stand up here. I've put them on a slight slant because we need to walk up and down there. Yeah, yeah. We'll put some corrugated sheets off and we'll keep this little madam off there because she knocked all the logs yeah. off here, didn't she? Well, yeah, she chases some sort of mole, vole or something running around up here. Um, and she comes up and then pulls all the logs and bits down, messes it all up. But anyway, we'll keep her off it. But uh, that's a great job you've done there. And that's a job we needed done, didn't we? Well, we've so, had nothing but rain, have we? So we've been well, in and out doing jobs, haven't we? And this we is have. not a I mean, yesterday was horrendous, wasn't oh. it, with the rain, and we just ended up sit, probably sitting around for half a day, yep. waiting oh, in between rain, and it just messes you up, doesn't it? You've been doing a bit of research, haven't you? 
Yeah. On your mobile, bless you. Oh no. You well, hopefully, the hopefully the laptop um, charger will be here tomorrow or next day anyway, or whenever it comes. Like you know. I so. think where it got kinked, I think that's what bugged it up. But well, it's, it's that's messed us up for the videos we we would have had out um, two weeks, last two weeks really, isn't it? Yeah. And obviously me going to hospital. But anyway, bar the bar. That's a fantastic job you've done there. We really needed that done. Yeah. And that's fantastic. I'm going to get back on. I'm uh, still over on the wall. On there. So we'll get this done. Knock this out by about two. Yeah. Should have it done. And tomorrow, if you're up to a uh, sort of standard, then you can set the beds out and then I can get the Yeah, yeah. We'll get that done tomorrow. But I'm going to crack on. Okay, folks. So... Notice I'm not working to a line, I'm just working off my level, right? Because it's such a small thing, it's just no point to it. And uh, you can go. So let's uh, get some muck. Pretty sticky this stuff. You can see the steam coming off it still, look. It's still quite hot. Lock on there. Working out the barrel now, so Do is put my little level on, make sure it's running in so it's a little bit out here. Perfect. Check it's uh, so I've got to go down here. If you tap the bottom of the block, the block twists round, lifts up the other side rather than all plunging it down. And then the whole thing needs to go down just a tad. That's done. We'll just clean this off. These are old blocks, you see. Old new. So they were uh, sitting around the back. So now I've just got to bring it in for plumb. Right on. So that's that one in. That's what I say about this stuff. It's like how sticky it is. Hard to get off your trail a little bit, but it's good stuff. Like normally, if I do this with normal muck, that runs in lovely. It's a little bit sticky, and the steam's coming off. It's still working, you see. Making up my excuses. <laughs> Already. 
Oh, that's pretty plumb, that uh, level, I should say. Just gonna bed it in a little bit. So what I'm doing now is just taking it flush at the front, making it flush. Just check it is plumb. Should have got me a little level on that. Spot on. Beautiful. Remember, I'm not a bricklayer, I'm a carpenter, but I just, uh, block work is pretty, pretty straightforward, really. Um, I always put the slots down the holes. Sec, just get a bit of a of water. Because the sun's out, the uh, the lime starting to carbonate. So I'm just going to get a quick mix up here. I don't know if you can see that, but I am anyway. We're going to have a little cut in there. Get a bit of that out there. Right. So we're going to put a block here. And we should end up with a little small cut like we've had on the other side. So, put one with a flush front. So, we'll get this one in there. You can see there's a little cut to go there. I'm just eyeballing it down first before I tamp it down. <laughs> Spot on. Back in the middle there. Oh my god. I might change my trade. I don't know. Probably should I. I'm not one of those off the boat of trades. <laughs> Tradesmen. Chance in the round. This isn't my trade. Very important to get these corners right so it helps helps especially if you're going up high all right that's pretty much it there that's spot on there so what i'll do now is i'll uh just check the front of this again You're pretty, pretty pleased with that. Pretty pleased with that. Right, so 
I'm gonna go away with this grinder, cut a piece to go in there, put that in and then just carry on up. I've got uh, another two courses to go here and uh, should have this done by about two, half one, two. And that'd be a little porch block work done. Okay, folks, so uh, I just want to show you what Tracy's been doing. Look, she's covered up the, um, the timber now for next year because we're probably not going to need it now because the summer's coming. And we have got a lot, lot more to cut up yet, but that's going to protect it for now. Let it dry out a bit more and that'll all be ready for next uh, winter's wood burners. And we're going to need plenty of it because we got, um, we've got two wood burners now that we use and we're going to be having our range cooker hopefully next year but i just want to show you i'll finish now tracy's going to start making some dinner we're going to have an early dinner today um but <clears throat> so there's the porch base okay now it looks a little bit imposing because we're we're low on the ground because remember there's going to be four to six inches going back here with gravel and you know lifting up the ground and then in, in front of that porch round here there's going to be a massive big step so you're going to, it's going to step up and so you step into the porch uh, it's the way they do it out here because of the uh, rain when the winter comes you do have a lot of rain so you want to keep your porches high but uh there you go so that's it finished now to that level anyway Okay, so got all the corners nice and uh, plumb. Everything's nice and level. Uh, this will give you a visualisation of the space. Uh, obviously, there's going to be a brand new door. I'm going to make a new door for here. A nice swept head with a um, like a Georgian style pane, <laughs> six six pane or whatever, nine pane. Um, but the lime's still wet. If I push it in a little bit, it's a little bit soft but it's sticky and that's the trick with this stuff um, there you go that's it all uh, done all I've got to do now is just have a nice tidy up I'm going to brush all the uh, stonework, uh, the block work down the thing is though it doesn't matter because this is all being rendered from the ground up to where the uh, seals will start the window seals and then you'll have I'll show you in a minute I've got a little drawing off I've got a little uh, doodle sketch but um there this will all be rendered on the outside with lime mortar uh have three coats with a finishing coat and then it'll be um, lime washed with two or three coats inside there'll be a timber little timber frame goes inside all the way around um and then that'll be insulated behind and then obviously the benches where i was saying remember ah so here on this uh corner here 
you see my hand is this will be a five inch post okay 125 mil roughly posts that's that'll be for each side of the door that'll be the door stops and then there'll be a five inch post on the corner okay and that leaves around about 400 in the middle which will be a sash there and i'll show you in a little drawing and then in here there'll be a, a bench either side with a little oak lift up lid put your shoes and bits in there uh, let me show you my doodle so stick my glasses on so you can see it hopefully um okay hopefully you can see that guys sun ain't too much on it so uh, let's put it up here hang on okay so that's what it's going to end up looking like something like that these are the walls i've put in then you've got the step come down this high down here somewhere okay then these are the walls i've just done then there'll be oak posts both sides then i'm going to do an, a, a swept oak top completely with a swept door and then two sashes either side um it'll be a raised and filled panel in the center i'm not sure if i'm two or one yet but it, that's the six panes that'll be in the doors in the windows and the doors and the door inside the house door as well and this post here will be that five inch one i was telling you about which will be the door frame and then we're not sure this is what we call a norman style of uh, framing right and you don't get a lot of this curved stuff in normandy you get a lot of it in england but not in uh, normandy so i'm toying whether to do it that way or this way it's my choice don't have to uh, worry about it um and then behind that here will be rendered lime again and then lime washed to match this lime wash on here and these posts there'll be uh, uh mason's mitres and chamfered down the post and round the side i haven't got drawn drawing aside i don't think no um i have got somewhere on a little pad i've done it anyway and then these here these bits here if you turn it sideways round they would stick out they would jut out and i was thinking of doing something like this here this type of molding i've got to hand cut all this out though and sand it so it takes a lot of time but there's two of them to do um and coming back up here they're the seals that would overhang there would be a door seal and within this this system as well uh that when i build it i'm going to build it all with um insulation um oh, strips you know inside the door windows everything it'll all be fully insulated as well to keep it draft free um, but it doesn't have to we're not too worried about it uh breathing you know it has to breathe but draft free and all this by the way is an oak in lovely oak everything's going to be made in oak i'm going to make the whole lot um i've done a quick calculation on the uh on my little book for working out prices if i was making this for someone in england and doing all the work with stonework and everything you're probably looking about thirty thousand pound so basically the oak it's going to cost me about 500 quid uh the stonework and all the footings and everything's cost about 300 400 materials and then it's my labor so for about a thousand pound i can make that for thirty thousand. <laughs> but uh don't worry about the money it's just the uh the fact i can make it i'm gonna make it and on the top we're gonna have a uh, slate coming down you know so it's slated so you'll see that i should have done a little drawing from the side and also you'll see all the peg joints whether there's one or two pegs in each one and it'll all be peg jointed morts and tenon properly anyway something to look forward to and by the way i just wanted to say uh, I'm just going to turn you around. Hopefully you can see me there, yeah. So, tune in on Wednesday. Because uh, we've been muddled up with our videos because we, um, one of the components, uh, the battery uh, charger on the laptop where we do all our editing, had busted and we couldn't get on it. But uh, So it's messed up our videos, which we've got. So we're changing them a little bit. 
So tune in Wednesday because you see me and Tracy planting up the lavender field. Um, and we've got all the free rows in of lavenders and they're uh, tucked up ready for the uh, summer to grow. And they're going to be the nursery plants which we will be um, using to make a couple of thousand more plants to really fill that field up. But uh, you can see now, I'm just going to, I've got the sun in my eyes here because it's that's south facing and that's the way the uh, lavender face as well. So they're going to enjoy that. But uh, yeah, we've had a good day today. So I'm going to settle down a little while, have some grub and uh, get ready for tomorrow. Thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you.